The colon is the large intestine, which ends in the rectum. The function of the colon is to absorb water and salt, and the function of the rectum is to store stool before we go to the bathroom. Colorectal cancer is when cancer develops in the colon or the rectum. The overall lifetime risk of colorectal cancer, if we look at the entire population, is approximately 5%. It is one of the most common cancers in the United States. It's the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths. It is most common as we get older. And although there's the misconception that this is a disease of men, it is actually a concern for both men and women. A particular group of concern is African-Americans. They have a higher risk of colorectal cancer and may also have a higher risk of dying of colorectal cancer. Risk factors can be thought of as things that patients may be able to change or things that they may not be able to change. The things we cannot change are our age and our sex. We also cannot change our family history. That's a strong risk factor. People who have relatives who have had colon cancer are at increased risk. Being overweight is a risk factor. Diet probably plays a role. Smoking is a risk factor, and type 2 diabetes, which is related to being overweight, is also a risk factor. The typical symptoms of colon cancer can include bleeding from the rectum, abdominal pain that is not going away and is getting worse over time, weight loss, not feeling good, not feeling like eating, and then also a relatively abrupt change in bowel habits. One of the key things to realize about colorectal cancer is that screening in people who do not have any symptoms is one of our most important tools to decreasing the risk of people getting colon cancer in the first place and also dying from colon cancer. One of the challenges we face when we think about screening tests is that many people leading their daily life don't want to think about the possibility of colon or rectal cancer and they may believe that because they feel well, there's absolutely no chance that there's anything wrong. But precisely, that is when we want to be screening people who are eligible based on age. The current recommendations for screening persons who don't have any symptoms suggestive of colorectal cancer would include anybody who is age 50 or older, and also for people who have had first degree relatives with colorectal cancer, screening generally starts earlier. The principle of uh, colorectal cancer screening is really twofold. One is to find the precursors of colorectal cancer in the colon. Most colorectal cancers start as polyps, which are not yet cancers, but they can be found and potentially removed. And we know that performing this systematically in the population can dramatically decrease the risk of getting colorectal cancer in the first place. The second principle of screening is that if we find a, a tumor before it has caused symptoms, it's much more treatable, so the cure rate is much higher. At Stanford, we have several approaches to trying to reduce the rate of colorectal cancer in the population we serve, and also treating people who have been diagnosed with colorectal cancer. On the screening front, we are committed to delivering high-quality colonoscopy screening. On the treatment side, there is a multi-team approach with coordination between medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, surgeons, radiologists to deliver the highest quality of care to patients who have had diagnosis of colon and rectal cancer. The hope of public health efforts to increase the rate of screening, as well as efforts to improve the technology that we have available for screening, is that one day colon and rectal cancer could be a rare disease. And it is conceivable that we could achieve that. This is one of those situations where we can probably identify the majority of the precancerous lesions in the colon. And by removing them, we could substantially decrease the number of people in the population who get colon and rectal cancer in the first place.